All right. So a lot of people don't know this, but the reason why I've been able to build an audience of such passionate fans so quickly is because of one thing. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what that one thing is and how you can start implementing it into your marketing strategy today. Now, I'm also going to throw in a really powerful bonus tip towards the end of the video. So make sure to watch it start to finish because you're not going to want to miss this information. Now, before I jump into the teaching, this video is part three of a six part series breaking down my magnetic music marketing framework. In that first video, I showed you why traditional music marketing really isn't an effective way to have your voice heard, to build a fan base or to get paid with your music and why magnetic music marketing works better than anything I've seen before. Then in video number two, I broke down exactly how you could start implementing magnetic music marketing to see more momentum, to see faster results in less time, and of course, for free. So after you watch this video, make sure to go watch those two if you haven't yet. Anyway, the strategies I'm about to teach you aren't being taught in Ivy League marketing courses, let alone on YouTube, but I've been using these techniques for years, and in doing so, I've been able to transform my brand and my business into what it is today. But up until now, I've never shared this information publicly, so go grab something to write with because this could be life-changing when it comes to building your brand and your fan base online and you can start doing this today. Now I had to bring the easel out because there's going to be a lot of teaching in this video in a short amount of time so stick with me try to keep up if you need to pause this video obviously that's okay. Now second of all quick disclaimer this marker due to friction makes noise when I write on this paper and I know that bothers some of you guys so what I did was I did some prep work as you could probably see through the first page just so I can kind of keep the writing to a minimum and keep this video as efficient and quick as possible so you guys can go out and implement the stuff I'm about to teach you. Now content marketing number one important thing as far as social media, as far as email, as far as building a website, building an ecosystem around you as a brand and a business, more specifically a music-based brand and business is content marketing regardless of what anybody else says. Now, the key components to content marketing would be posts, captions, or uh, copy, and then hashtags as far as uh, platforms such as Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, or even TikTok for that matter. So I'm going to write that down. Now, when it comes to content marketing, posts, are obviously videos or uh, photos, right? Now captions, as I just said, sometimes I can't talk and write at the same time. So if I'm writing something on the page and I'm not talking, it's because I'm trying not to screw up while I'm doing a one take for you guys. I'm human though. So bear with me. Now, post captions would be uh, copywriting. This could be um, something promotional. It could be heartfelt. It could be an idea, a thought, a question that you're using as context for something on Instagram. But if we're talking about captions on YouTube, for example, that might be your title. That might be your uh, video description. Captions in a broad sense is just copywriting for that in particular piece of content. Now, the third thing, especially on Instagram, which this is going to be highly Instagram focused, but you can utilize all of this concept and all of this strategy and technique to any platform with just mild modifications, barely any. So hashtags. Now, what I like to think of hashtags as is hashtags, if you're a fisherman, they're bait. You're looking for the big fish. You're looking for new followers that you can then convert into fans. Now, without the hashtags, it's hard to grow this, this audience of X amount of people because nobody else is coming to find you uh, in an inbound sense, that magnetic music marketing sense. A magnetic music marketing concept would have people coming into you with the hashtags, then you're captivating them with captions, no pun intended, although that works quite well. And then your posts need to be high quality and interesting enough. And sometimes captions can make a really bland uh, video or a photo way more interesting and way more engaging. You know what? Let me pause the video right now and show you a good example. So you see this post. Now with this caption, not very engaging. But if I take this post and add something like this, much more engaging. Does that make sense? Anyway, so what I want you guys to remember in this video is what am I posting for? No matter what day of the week it is, look at your uh, content marketing strategy, look at whatever platform you're posting on and remember this, what am I posting for? But probably not in the way that you're thinking I'm saying it. So let me write this out. The number four, clever, maybe, effective, 100%. What am I posting for? Now, one thing that I get asked all the time is, Adam, what do I post? How do I post consistently? People are asking 
what to use as posts, what to use as captions and hashtags. So I'm gonna go through all of that in this video as you could probably already tell. Now, one thing that I find most challenging, especially when I got started, is how to be consistent. I'm running out of content ideas. I don't wanna do any more selfies. I don't wanna take photos in the same location, take photos of food or, or post album covers 40 times in a row like some of you guys uh, do unfortunately and that's why I'm making this video. I wanna get you off of that and get that momentum and progress working in your favor. So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to what am I posting for? I'm gonna show you. Four quadrants, that's going to be a lifesaver for you. We need to look at our buckets, our, our content categories as four buckets. For example, if we look at my Instagram, and you can put this in any context, I don't care if you're a chiropractor, if you are a fitness influencer, if you're a mechanic, obviously my people, my music creators, this is my content categories. These are my buckets, right? So I have lifestyle posts. These could be posts with my beautiful fiance, with my puppy Daisy. This could be me out and about at some location when I'm traveling. This could be a selfie with my you know, buddy Danny or Ricky. Uh, this could be things that are just based on my life and things that I'm doing outside of the studio, outside of this office, outside of looking at a camera lens. So that's what lifestyle in my bucket looks like. Now the second bucket for me is music slash YouTube because they're so kind of closely knit as far as my branding on Instagram and all the different platforms for that matter. So music plus YouTube. Now obviously this could be a beat making video, this could be a behind the scenes dinking around on the microphone, this could be a session that I'm with someone, a listening session for an artist that I might be friends with or uh, kind of acquainted with. Um, this could be an event that I'm with, a bunch of different music creators and producers and artists and we're sharing this type of stuff. This could be content for that because it's music or YouTube related. It could be behind the scenes of this video for that matter, that could be in that bucket. Now the third bucket is highly shareable content. What is that? It's those memes. It's something funny. It's something that has an emotional trigger that isn't necessarily tied to me too tightly to where other people are going to just absolutely love sharing this stuff. So uh, I'll put shareable here. Like I said, memes, this could be um, you know, funny video, this could be a, a funny uh, photo of yourself or something that's just really um, relatable to a whole lot of people to share. I mean, you guys understand, you guys have been on social media, right? So the fourth content bucket, right? The fourth content category for me is videos, right? So videos in this sense, could be a preview for this YouTube video. It could be a snippet of a YouTube video opener. It could be a video of uh, you know, my beautiful fiance and I in Switzerland or something like that to where any video in my bucket categorization goes into videos, right? So these four groups are incredibly important. So what does this allow us to do? So when we look at lifestyle or music or shareable or videos, what we can do right now is make four folders in your phone. You can make four albums in your phone to where you can go through every photo that you have in your camera roll. I don't care if it's 300 photos, 30 photos, or 3,000 photos, you go through and you select. Now obviously on Android it'd be a little bit different, but I'm talking about iPhone. I know both can do this because I do this with my students. What we do is we take all these different buckets, all these different content categories, and we categorize them. Therefore, not only are you seeing those gaping holes in your content marketing strategy to where like, okay, let's say that one of these for you is selfies because you're a makeup influencer for that matter, or just a really self-confident person that likes doing selfies. I mean, nothing wrong with that either. You might have a whole bucket full of 150 selfies. And then in your lifestyle uh, bucket, if you were to have a lifestyle bucket, you might only have five, right? These other two you might be lacking, so you can clearly see which ones you have to spend a little bit more time and attention on. We're gonna get to that in a second. Now, why do we wanna pick four buckets, four different content uh, categories. Well, I'll show you why. It's pretty, pretty simple. This is an Instagram grid drawn by yours truly. So it's kind of uh, out of whack as far as ratio goes, but this is what it looks like, right? If you go on mine, if you go on yours, if you go on any celebrities, it's three across and then as many down as you can go, right? And the reason that we want to do four content categories, four buckets is because then, then they never overlap. And I'm going to show you how that looks. So one, two, three, Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
Bear with me. Now I did that on a grander scale like that because I know that some of you mathematicians uh, would say that, oh, they're gonna eventually overlap. Now they get close, don't get me wrong, but if you do this with the four bucket system, they're never going to overlap. You're never going to have a two and a two or a three and a three. They all space out. And the great thing about this, guys, is this is a great basis. Don't be afraid to ever have like a three and a three next to each other. It's not uh, make or break, but what this is going to do is it's going to give you some consistency, obviously, but it's also going to give you a pattern that people aren't going to see, but it's going to be able to give you more clarity on what to, what to post next, right? What to focus on. Almost on, a, like I said, a curse word. But this ultimately is going to give you variety in your posts. Now, let's look at my Instagram. I'll break it down into, let's say, 20 or 25 different posts that I recently did. Now, obviously, some of these butt up against each other, but you could see a wide variety of all four of my content buckets, right? You have lifestyle, you have music and YouTube, you have highly shareable content, and you have videos. This is what I'm talking about. If you're only doing one, you will not grow. Just like the ABC mapping, you will not grow if all of your content is too similar. All of a sudden, people start glossing over your content. They look through it like it's not new because it looks so similar to what they're used to you see or used to seeing from you. Now, the great thing about this is also it's a grand experiment. It's ABCD testing instead of just AB testing. So if your audience, uh, let's say your audience really resonates with one of your content buckets and uh, let's say number one and number three out of the four, just for a quick example, then you can post more of that and maybe evolve one of them out that is clearly not working and then throw something else in. Or honestly, if you just wanna kinda of take that and then whittle it down to maybe three, that's okay too. Marketing in this uh, regard, in the content marketing strategy, is what's working for your audience and then ultimately we could work one back in. And ultimately, what I keep saying ultimately, I apologize for that. If something's not working, it's usually because you're making content for you and not your audience. Your Instagram, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, all of those different platforms are user-centric, not creator-centric. They're consumer-centric, right? So if your audience is seeing things that they like, they're going to share, they're going to engage and like and comment and, and DM you about it, and you're going to start conversations, a lot of conversations. And that's what Instagram wants to see. If somebody can scroll through all of your content and never engage, A, Instagram's not going to show them your content because they're not engaged with it. Therefore, Instagram ranks it as a very low quality score, a very low value score. And ultimately, those people who don't engage and don't like or don't comment and just gl glaze through it because Instagram also, the algorithm sees how fast or how long you stay on a post. I'm getting way too deep right now for this stuff. But ultimately, what we have to do is we have to be able to have this variety to keep people interested, no different than the pattern interrupt video that I just did a few weeks ago. Now, what do we need to do on each and every one of those content buckets? I'm gonna let you kind of figure this out. No, I'm not gonna keep you waiting too long. So we have the lifestyle, we have music, shareable, and videos. Every single one of your buckets need to have three folders on your phone, you can have them on a computer, you can have them uh, you know, partially digital, partially analog, if you wanna write some of the stuff down and just replicate it later. But ultimately, what I want you guys to have, this video should be called Ultimately, let me switch that up. So lifestyle, what do we wanna have? We wanna have the posts, we wanna have the captions, we wanna have the hashtags. I really hope some of you guys understand where I'm going with this. Makes a whole lot of sense when you break it down. Let's say for lifestyle, I have a whole folder on my phone that has 15 to 50 posts that I'm like, oh, these would be great to share when it comes to lifestyle posts. And then in the notes app, I have four folders or four notes all with these different headers. This lifestyle, music, and YouTube videos and shareable. I'll actually show you what that would look like in the notes app. And then within those notes, you have captions. You could separate them with a few spaces. You can make some lines just so you know what you've used. You could put a little check mark in, the, in front of the ones that you've used already or even delete them. I never recommend deleting them. I always recommend keeping them and maybe highlighting them or uh, making them italic after you've used them and then making a little date next to that to know when you've used them. But ultimately, I gotta stop saying ultimately. But what we want to do, guys, is we wanna take these posts and we wanna be able to go into an app and find the captions. And I'm talking about the Notes app. I'm not talking about some captions for less app that you can get off the Apple Store. That's not what I'm talking about. 
posts. Let's say I find a picture of lifestyle. I have a caption. Captions, guys, should be thoughts, should be provoking stories, should be questions, should be engaging content, some contextual content around what you're doing. Let's say that I'm standing by a river in Nashville. Well, nobody's gonna know that I'm in Nashville, so obviously I would tag that location, and then I could say something along the lines of, uh, standing by the river in Nashville, I can't believe that only four weeks ago this was mostly frozen over. Crazy how weather changes in this part of the country. Um, sitting next to the water, I really had time to reflect on what I did over the last few months, and I couldn't be happier to spend six days in Nashville with two of my closest friends. You get what I'm saying? Like something that's a little bit more uh, engaging and a little bit more oomph to it than river shot. Like you get what I'm saying? I'm, I'm being a little bit exaggerative here, but ultimately what we can, sorry for the ultimately, <laughs> I, I promise I'm working on it. We need a hashtag that's going to pair with that. So what we can do is we can make hashtag lists that we can then pair with the captions and the posts that all kind of work cohesively as one thing so that we're not sitting in front of our phone at three o'clock or 6 p.m. or 9 p.m. saying, what am I gonna post today? Oh, let me uh, go get my sister or my significant other or, or prop my phone up to try to take some photos now. When you're out and about, you could take photos. You could take photos with your camera, with somebody else's phone that can airdrop them or send them to you via text message. Categorization is going to save your ass and going to elevate you and have you standing out from the crowd. But that's not all. So we have some posts, we have some great content that we're gonna share to, to, to Instagram or whatever platform, really, I almost said YouTube, and that could work too if you're doing a lot of video content. We need to have these things structured to where you're not stressed out and unorganized and kind of just going by the seat of your pants, flying by the seat of your pants, as they say, when you're doing your content marketing uh, on any platform for that matter. So once we have all of this laid out, this is where the real magic happens. So we're posting more frequently. We're posting with the one, two, three, four pattern that I just showed you a couple minutes ago. So what do we wanna add to each one of those posts? Any guesses? Wanna add location to every single one of your posts. It does not matter if you're there. It does not matter if you're still there. I post a lot of photos from places that I've been while I'm traveling, different events. That's another great hack as far as Instagram. You could tag events that are going on, such as NAM. Winter NAM just passed a few months ago. You could, uh, in fact, I did. I tagged myself at NAM, and even though people are like, "Hey, are you at NAM?" and you kind of have to explain yourself, this is a great way to put your content up as a billboard that you're there on a highly searchable location. In that regard, I live in the Orlando area. I've been to Chicago recently, and in Nashville just a couple months ago, and Minneapolis. So when I take photos in these different places, I'm going to tag that location. I might even tag a business that I was at or a attraction that I was outside of because then when other people are looking at those attractions, maybe they took some photos. Maybe somebody's just interested in uh, the Atlanta Zoo, for example. I stayed at, stayed at a beautiful Airbnb there just a few weeks ago. I could say, hey, I was just by the Atlanta Zoo and then other people are going to discover you. You're trying to get strangers to come into your ecosystem, become followers, then you can over deliver and turn them into fans. That way they follow you and you build your revenue, you build your fan base, and you build a career around strangers discovering you. That's what content marketing is all about, especially inbound marketing and magnetic music marketing. Now, after we add that location to our post, what do we do? We tag ourselves and all relevant brands and things around that post. So I'll give you an example right here. So. Oops, I knew I'd screw up eventually. Accounts, ah, that's a U in there. Accounts, you guys know I'm human. So you tag relevant accounts. So if I were to do this as a post, I could tag Ralph Lauren shirt. Um, I think I got these from Zenny, uh, Rolex, Sharpie, whatever brand this is. You get what I'm saying? Tag relevant accounts, do not. If you get anything out of this video, do not tag irrelevant accounts. I hate when somebody posts a uh, beat making uh, snippet and then they tag me, like I, I get it, but I'm not in that post. So people do it all the time, it's, it's okay, but don't post people that have nothing to do with what you're doing in hopes that they're gonna see it because Instagram's going to know that it's irrelevant and ultimately that could hurt your value score. But I digress. Now share to, what are we doing after that post goes live? 
So you've added your hashtags as the first comment, which is incredibly important. I would not recommend putting that in the actual caption itself. Sorry I didn't mention that earlier. I just kind of, at this point, think it's common sense from my other videos that I, where I've taught that. Leave the hashtags in the first comment and I'll tell you why in a second. Where do we want to share this to once this is on our main profile? We want to share it to our Instagram story. It's a great content repurposing tactic that's also going to get more eyeballs on people that might see your uh, stories, but they're not actually seeing your posts. And this is a great way to reel them back in and make that solid connection. So share to. And how do we do that? Well, underneath our posts, there's a little paper airplane. We hit that, share the story. From there, we can add stickers. We can add you know, excuse me, doodles and, and calls to action. Hey, new post. One thing I highly recommend is covering the post with a sticker, maybe adding some uh, hashtags, adding your location again, because people are going to see these stories in different hashtag areas. So add some huge hashtags. Don't get too niche down on this. Just add some huge hashtags for extra discoverability. And then people are going to see that they're going to get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're going to be intrigued. And then they're going to go to your main profile photo because ultimately the first hour is that window that you really want to kind of engage with people, which we're going to get to in a second. So getting that story up and sharing immediately is going to get people to the content which is going to boost your engagement, boost your discoverability, and boost that value score that Instagram's algorithm will kind of pin each and every piece of this content with. So spend, were you just listening to me? Spend 15 to 30 minutes interacting when you can. Now, if you can't, I'm not here to tell you that you're a piece of shit or anything like that because I don't do it all the time either. But ultimately, what we want to do is after we post, after we tag and share, we want to spend the first 15 to 30 minutes engaging with the people who are leaving comments underneath our posts. What does this do? It adds to the comment total. It shows an enormous amount of engagement. And this is going to tell Instagram, wow, like this is on fire. This must be a great piece of content. Let's show this to the rest of the audience because I've, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. What Instagram does is when you post, they're, they're looking at it for the first hour. They're looking at it for the first 60 minutes. And then they're showing it to about 10% of your audience. Out of those first 60 minutes or less for that matter, they're gauging how many people out of those 10% of your followers are engaging, are interacting, are looking at, are intrigued by, are interested in your content before they open it up to a larger subsect of your own following. It would be a perfect world, I guess, if Instagram would show our content to everybody that's following us. But if your followers are following 500 people, and all 500 people are posting twice a day, how are they going to show that to one person all in one day? And that's ultimately where the algorithm comes into play. The algorithm's trying to show the user, as I mentioned earlier, it's very much so user and consumer based rather than creator based. We have to create content that is going to appease the consumer into really enjoying and taking action on what they're doing. Now, we're not done. The bonus tip that I've been talking about that's so important to add on to the bucket system here is after four days, what are we going to do? Well, just a couple seconds ago, I was telling you about how I add hashtags as my first comment and how Instagram has a kind of a value score for each PC or content. I'm not talking like one to 10, like what is my score? It's an overall uh, output or outlook on, you know, how valuable they see your account and your posts. I promise you that if you have 2,000 followers and you're posting the same stuff all the time and it really doesn't have any intrigue or it's not engaging is really what I'm looking for, you're going to have maybe 10 or 15 likes on it. I mean, it's, it's going to be a depressingly low engagement number. And Instagram right now in the world that we're living in, 10% is kind of the industry standard as far as like this is working pretty well. If you have above that, it's usually because you have a lower amount of users. You might be fresh to the, the system. You might be fresh to the platform. And that goes for Facebook and Twitter, like all these different platforms. You're seeing lower engagement because there's more people on it. Therefore, if we hit that 10%, there's a good chance we could hit 20, 30, 50. Some of my posts have even hit, you know, 30 or 40 before in, in the last few months, which to me, when you look at um, actual discoverability and actual impact and impressions is what I'm looking for. Impressions actually mean just as much as your likes or your views. So go into your insights uh, and check that out because impressions are 
incredibly important. Hey guys, sorry for the cut edit. Not only did I realize I was rambling like usual, but I glanced up and my battery pack for this lavalier mic had died at a very inopportune time. So what I was talking about is deleting your hashtags after four days. Leave them as the first comment. They don't have any benefit in the captions versus first comment. I've A-B tested this till I'm blue in the face. Captions, it looks a little tackier. If you modify your captions at any point, you get punished by Instagram. Uh, it's just not, in my opinion, it's not a good practice. So go through after four days, your hashtags are not really effective anymore at bringing new eyeballs in after four days. So go in, tidy it up, and when Instagram goes through and crawls all of your content, they're gonna see like, okay, this guy doesn't have an overage, or this person doesn't have an overage of hashtags that they're either cycling through or maybe really repetitive, which isn't good, which isn't a good look ever. But not only that is you're using them for what they're for, and then you're getting rid of them to tidy things up. It doesn't clutter, it doesn't look tacky at that point, and you're really just kind of doing some housekeeping. If you miss one here or there, it's no big deal. You don't have to go back now, six months ago, and delete the hashtags that you were using. Don't worry about that. We're talking about now into the future, or maybe in the last few days, if you left them as your first uh, comment, do this. What are you posting for will change your life. I wanna know in the comments below if this is going to be something that you're implementing, if you've already kind of been implementing this, and also let me know what your four buckets are. Let's get some clarity together now. Let's kick it back to me sitting in a chair. Now, if you enjoyed that breakdown, I have good news because in my upcoming Sell Music Masterclass 2.0, I'm gonna be giving away all my best secrets and tips and strategies and techniques such as my inbound music marketing formula, my advanced video marketing framework, and my social media domination module, just to name a few. Now, registration opens to the public on April 6th, and this is going to be the best, most up-to-date training I've ever released. It's going to contain everything I've ever learned about magnetic music marketing. Now, this is where it gets exciting, because in the next video, I'm gonna break down the entire plan, start to finish, beginning to end, everything you need to follow to have your voice heard, find adoring fans, and get paid doing what you love to do the most, music. I'm literally ripping down the curtain and sharing every step that you have to take. So you're not gonna wanna miss that video because I'm literally sharing the entire game plan with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to get your name on that early bird wait list for my upcoming Sell Music Masterclass 2.0 if you haven't yet. Now, go take some action on what you just learned and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Welcome to the Sell Music Masterclass where we give you, the creator, proven advanced strategies with actionable tactics and techniques to help you monetize your music and develop a powerful online brand with your instructor, Adam Ivey.